come to the to the session. Uh, so, so the topic for this session is uh, encryption. So we have uh, six talks. So basically, we'll have uh, five minutes for for each talk, and uh, we have a five minute Q and A. So it's possible that uh, you can ask the question uh, in the chat room, or you, you can just uh, speak out the questions. So the first talk is uh, efficient lattice based in a product functional encryption by Tilo Mas, Azam Solomani, Akshuman Kam Kamaka, you see Maria Bamodo Mera. Sorry for my pronunciation. And uh, Tilo will give the talk. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I hope you see my screen. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so my name is Dylan Martz. I'll talk about uh, our paper on efficient lattice-based uh, inner product functional encryption, joint work with uh, Jose Maria Bermudo Merang, Schumann Karmakar, and Azam Soleimanian. Um, as you might know, uh, functional encryption is a generalization of public key encryption, where we have a, a setup process where we produce uh, public parameters, public keys that allow an encryptor, say Alice in our case, to encrypt a message X. And independent of that, we have a key generation process that allows to produce so-called functional keys depending on a function F that uh, given to a decryptor, Bob in our case, um, uh, Bob is able to, to decrypt from the encrypted message X, uh, a function of X, so F of X, uh, but without revealing the message itself. So the only information Bob should get is the result of this function. Uh, so this is kind of similar to homomorphic encryption where um, we also have computation on encrypted, encrypted data. Uh, but here we demand additionally that uh, the decryptor is able to then decrypt the result of this computation. Uh, a lot of research has been done in the area of functional encryption, but let me just point out um, a couple of things. Uh, it is uh, well known that uh, constru constructing functional encryption schemes for arbitrary functions is equivalent to constructing indistinguishability obfuscations. So uh, this is uh, a bit inefficient still. But on the other hand, another line of research was established, say starting with uh, Abdallah et al. in 2015, focusing on, on functions, uh, on, on schemes with limited functionality, concretely for uh, inner products, so linear functions, quadratic functions, uh, and also um, uh, so with emphasis on efficiency and being uh, also constructed on well-established assumptions such as DDH, uh, DCR, LWE. Uh, our paper, our work uh, continues this line of research and we provide a, a ring LWE based function encryption for inner product. Uh, actually two schemes, uh, one with selective, one with adaptive security. Uh, and to do so, we also provide some new results on uh, ideal lattices. Um, the main goal of uh, why trying to prove a scheme for ring LW, based on ring LWE assumption is because we truly are aiming at uh, constructing something uh, practical and to, to argue that uh, we did so, we also provided uh, an optimized implementation a publicly available one to, to test uh, the scheme. Uh, in addition, also compiler to, to decentralized identity-based multi-client setting. So a setting where we have multiple encryptors. Uh, just to give you a bit of taste of our schemes. Um, so um, the main idea in, in inner product functional encryption schemes, how to construct them is to construct them similarly to uh, a public key encryption schemes. Uh, but here we want to encrypt vectors. So we kind of produce multiple uh, public keys. Uh, and when we're encrypting, we are encrypting each coordinate of a vector with a different public key. 
uh, but with a shared randomness across the encryption. And, and this allows us then to, to generate uh, uh, keys uh, uh, as linear combinations of secrets, so functional keys that allow you to, to decrypt then uh, an inner product uh, in the end uh, of, of this message without revealing the, the message itself. Um, maybe just uh, to, to get a bit more uh, feeling what's happening here, um, the, the main difficulty in improving uh, security of, of functional encryption schemes is to argue that ciphertexts are, are uh, indistinguishable uh, even after uh, an adversary observed certain uh, functional keys. And what happens in many cases is that these functional keys might reveal a bit more information about, uh, about uh, uh, secrets than one would maybe want to uh, naively assume. So what happens in our case is that this uh, functional keys, when an adversary has functional keys, uh, he or she uh, obtains, obtains some additional information about the randomness used in the encryption and also in the setup process. Uh, so to, to argue security and distinguishability, uh, we, we needed to have a, a version of ring LWE, a generalization of uh, ring LWE problem in which uh, we, we, well, in this problem, we still need to distinguish uh, samples, uh, ring LWE samples from, in this, from uniformly at random sampled values but with additional hints on, on the secrets. And, and in our paper, we argued that for properly selected parameters, um, this problem is as hard as uh, the underlying ring LWE problem. So this trick, we, we used this trick to, to prove selective security. For adaptive security, we also needed a version of left or hash lemma in, in rings that, that we also proved, uh, but maybe for more details, please uh, check, uh, check our paper. Um, so uh, the result, uh, we were quite happy with the result since the ring setting uh, allowed us to, uh, to simplify the proofs leading to better parameters than uh, in existing schemes based on LWE. Uh, but the ring, ring setting also produces smaller keys, faster, faster operations, and additionally also allows to encrypt multiple vectors in parallel in one ciphertext. So uh, we, our scheme supports, uh, uh, let's say, SIMD type of computation. Uh, when you're able, when you're decrypting, you're decrypting, say, thousands of vectors in parallel uh, with just one evaluation. Uh, like I said, uh, there is an optimized uh, implementation available online, and uh, you can check uh, our paper for for uh, uh, evaluation of performance. Um, I will stop here. Uh, thank you for, for your attention. Okay, thanks, Tilo. So, any questions? Uh, so, I, I have a question that uh, um, I think your paper achieve uh, indistinguishability based security, right? Yeah, true, true. Yes, that's true. So I was thinking that uh, under like DDH assumption, so we can achieve adaptive uh, simulation based security. So mm -hmm. I want to uh, know whether it's possible to do this with uh, ring LWE. Uh, so for, for the adaptive, we, we, we also proved uh, uh, adaptive security in our scheme uh, for, for, uh, yeah, for going even uh, uh, better security. Um, well, <laughs> Um, it's hard to say if it is possible, probably it is, uh, but uh, well, if I had an answer, then probably we would include it also. <laughs> okay, so uh, and, uh, uh -huh. I had a, a, a small question about the uh, uh, multi-hint extended ring LW assumption. So uh, okay. this assumption is interactive. I mean, uh, for, the, for, for the hint, you have many terms. So this yes, is an yes. assumption or just uh, you just to keep all the terms uh, at the beginning? Um, yeah, so uh, the, the idea here is that uh, the only point is here that you get multiple hints on, on the secret and, uh, and noise uh, uh, terms uh, here in the, in the uh, ring LWE samples. So, so we, we allow multiple hints uh, um, 
on these values. So, so you, this, these hints are specially structured. They, they need to be obviously. I mean, it cannot be anything, but uh, um, because in our case, uh, uh, an adversary can ask for for many functional keys and gets quite a lot of information about. Uh, uh, um, the random values used, so so we needed to to have a, a version where a lot of hints are, can be can be produced. So 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 this uh, um, so here the R F and G H is depend by the by the secret key. Um, mm -hmm. This R uh, uh, this R G and F and H. Uh, uh, are are some uh, also random values. Um, actually, uh, f and r can be selected arbitrary, but not too big polynomials. And but they need to be a bit uh, uh, noisy with these additional terms. If they weren't noisy, they were uh, they, they you, you could directly extract s and e. But uh, um, in our case, they they, they need to be yeah not noisy. Okay. Okay, I think th thanks. Uh, thank you, thank you for the questions. Um, so let's move to the second talk. So the talk is uh, a new security notion for PKC in the standard model, weaker, simpler, and uh, still realizing secure channel by Vasily Beskorovanov, Roland uh, Grohl, uh, Jean Muller Cat. Uh, Astrid Ottenholm, Rebecca Stewart. So uh, Astrid will give the talk. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. And I hope you can see my slides and hear me and see me well. Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. So thank you very much for the introduction. And as I said, my name is Astrid Ottenhus, and I will give you some first ideas of our results to motivate you having a closer look into our paper, a new security notion for public key cryptography in the standard model, weaker, simpler, and still realizing secure channels. The paper is joint work with Vasily Beskorovanyov, Roland Kroll, Jörn Lacquade, and Rebecca Schwert, and most of my co-authors also joining right now to answer your questions afterwards. So firstly, I will try to motivate our research results by explaining the choice of our title. So an important goal of cryptographic tools is to facilitate secure channels between communicating parties, as seen here as with Alice and Bob. In our particular setting, we want to build them from authenticated channels in some form of encryption. This was previously achieved in different works by use of classic public key or tech-based encryption. All the security notions employed for this, however, are known to be unnecessarily strong for the specific purpose. In our work, we develop a new game-based security notion, which is weaker than the previous ones and built for a simpler construction, but at the same time, still strong enough to realize secure message transfer from authenticated channels. To show that this is not merely of Theoretic interest, we provide a concrete construction, which we prove in the standard model to fulfill our new security notion. Uh, this construction is more efficient than the previous one, one which had to fulfill stronger security notion to realize secure channels. I will now give you an overview of our contributions. So firstly, we developed a new type of en encryption scheme, namely sender binding encryption which unifies prior approaches to construct secure message transfer from authenticated channels. Sender binding encryption um, ties the ciphertext not only to the receiver as with classical public key encryption, but as well to the sending respectively encrypting party. For this type of encryption, we develop um, the corresponding game-based security notion. Our no new security notion is called int SBCPA meaning the property of indistinguishability under sender binding chosen plain text attack. As uh, SBCPA, secure sender binding encryption, can be generically obtained by various transformation seen here on the side from other types of encryption scheme. To construct um, a sender binding encryption from a classical public key scheme, we simply concatenate the sender ID to the message. This gives an int SBCPA, secure sender binding encryption scheme as long as the underlying public key, encryption key scheme 
fulfills the security notion of int r CCA, which lies strictly between CCA1 and CCA2 security. In our paper, we provide further details on this and the other transformations seen on the slides. In, a spe in especially check it out for the transformation from dual receiver encryption, as we provide concrete construction, which are more efficient than previously one knowns. We build one of the construction on the Macaulay's as well as the LPN assumption, which will be explained in detail in our video. In addition, in our paper, you can find the construction based on the LWE assumption. With these results on total on the right, we can affirm the research question if weaker security notions lead to simpler and more efficient construction of secure channel in the standard model. Um, coming now to a more theoretic part of our contribution, any encryption protocol satisfying our new security notion of int SBCPA can be used directly to realize secure message transfer and the model of universal composability, assuming the existence of authenticated channels. In the video and the paper, we provide details on the protocol, the functionalities we use and respectively adapt, and the proof itself. As last open question, we show how the new sender binding CPA security notion fits into the current landscape of other game-based security notions. We compared ourselves to classic public key encryption notions, as well as to the ones of tech-based encryption. Note that in both cases, there is some inter interpretation necessary to make the settings comparable. Um, regarding the public key, Notions, the only relationship is that sender binding CPA implies classic CPA, where there are no other implications. The connection to tech based encryption notions is a bit stronger, as the only assumption um, there is that the respective tech space is at least as large as the number of parties. So, if you are familiar with TBE, the weakest prior TBE notions were adaptive tech and selective tech weak CCA. And in our paper, we weaken those notions further to arrive at given tag weak CCA, so the G tag seen on the top, which we then derive sender binding SBCPA from. One benefit of these quite straightforward implications is that with our, with our work, selective tag weak CCA itself is already enough to get secure message transfer with, via authenticated channels without the need for further encryption constructions. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope I could motivate you to have a look into our video or the paper itself. And now as my colleagues are joining in, we are happy to answer your questions. Okay, thanks for the talk. So any questions? So you can also leave the question in the chatting room. Uh, what, what is the technical difficulty to achieve in the CPA DRE from, uh, uh, for example, DDH assumption? Can you please just repeat the question once? Uh, so uh, you constructed in the CPA DRE uh, from Macri's assumption or LWE assumption, right? Yes, there are uh, two constructions. What is the technical hurdle to achieve this from, for example, DDH? Is it, it any, well, why, why uh, only from uh, Macris or LWE? Uh, why cannot you use uh, DDH or pairings, something like that, to do best assumption? So um, for the transformation, maybe Vasily can join in, but as we wanted to have a look more for the post-quantum security, we at least wanted to base our security notion on Macaulay's or LWE and didn't look at the DDH variants. I see. I see. I, okay. Yeah, but maybe for the uh, practical uh, for the practicability insights, it might be a good idea to try to construct a DDH. Uh, maybe there will be even more practical constructions possible. Uh, so any questions? Okay, thanks for the talk and thanks for the questions. Um, so we move to the our third talk, which is uh, encapsulated 
uh, oh no, uh, liquid resilient IBE AB with optimal liquid rate from Lattice mm -hmm. by Qi Qi Lai, uh, Feng Hao Liu, uh, Zhe Dong Wang, and uh, Qi Qi Lai will give the talk. Hello, everyone. I hope you can see my slides. Yes, we can. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Qi Qi Lai. Uh, my paper is a liquid resilient IBE AB with optimal liquid rate from lattice. This is a joint work with Feng Hao and Zhedong. When consider liquid resilience, it always means that uh, critical systems that are circular even when um, a partial safety key is leaked. In practice, a circular crypto system may be broken if partial safety key is leaked. Uh, moreover, a liquid resilience can be used to achieve uh, um, security for more complicated crypto systems, such as non malleable code and KDM security. Therefore, liquid resilience has uh, have been an, an active research subject. More formally, liquid resilience can be described by the following security experiment between the challenger and the adversary. Uh, at the beginning, the challenger sends the must public key to the adversary. Then the adversary can conduct a key extraction query and a key leakage query in an adaptive way. Uh, finally, the adversary can conduct a challenge query and uh, the challenger uh, responds with a random children bit B. And we say the adversary wins the experiment if uh, it outputs a bit B prime such that B prime equals B. In this paper, we consider uh, a model called a uh, um, bounded bond, leakage model. In this model, the adversary can obtain arbitrary information on secret key as long as the number of leaked bit is uh, smaller than a parameter, parameter L, which is smaller than the size of secret key. In order to characterize this requirement more clearly, there are two important um, models studied in the literature, uh, relative leakage model and bounded retrieval model. In a relative leakage model, all efficiency parameters depend on the leakage value L. Uh, in bounded retrieval model, L is an independent parameter which grows only with the size of secret key. Therefore, we think that um, bounded retrieval model should be a much more preferable model. Uh, however, uh, for concrete instantiations, we always first construct a construction in the RLM and then enhanced it into BRM. Um, below for concurrent state of art, uh, for pre-quantum setting, uh, there is a beautiful and a general framework called dual system encryption, which can derive uh, optimal liquid rate for IBE and ABE. However, for post-quantum setting, uh, it is still an interesting and a challenging pro uh, open problem for instantiating dual system encryption from post-quantum assumptions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in prior work, there have been a PKE construction that are, um, th that are uh, optimal leakage rate. However, their technique cannot be uh, generalized to uh, more advanced settings such as IBE, ABE. Uh, uh, so the main question in this paper is, how to achieve optimal liquid rate for IBE ABE in both relative and bounded retrieval model with the security matching existing uh, non liquid resilient IBE ABE under LWE. And uh, the my result of this paper consists of uh, uh, liquid resilient ABE with optimal liquid rate in the uh, RLM and the BRM and with optimal block liquid rate on multiple six keys. For containing, um, according to the general framework for liquid resilience from uh, weak hash proof system, uh, here we needed to use uh, uh, AB WHPS with the following properties, success key and adaptive security. However, uh, all previous related constructions just uh, satisfy success key with the selective security or adaptive security with the non succinct key. So our next target is to consider how to achieve the required ABWHPS. Uh, in order to describe our technique more clearly, let, uh, let us first recall the general ABWHPS from any KPABE. Uh, due to the time limit, we defer the details to a paper. 
according to this, uh, this construction, we know that the liquid rate is the upper bound by this ratio. Besides, we know that uh, Mm, the second property of KPAB will derive uh, will derive the uh, second key property of ABWPSM. So for all, all, for all desired ABWPSM, we need uh, uh, ABE with the properties of succinct key and adaptive security. However, uh, all existing ABE from lattice uh, with the succinct key do not have adaptive security. So in order to overcome this obstacle, we introduce a new notion called partially adaptive ABE. Particularly, we, uh, we, uh, we require adaptive security for the uh, first part of attribute vector X uh, and selective security for the later part of uh, attribute IJ. With this notion, we can achieve, we can uh, obtain a desired ABWPS. And then put all things together, we can get uh, uh, adaptive ABE with optimal liquid rate in the uh, relative liquid model. Mm. Uh, due to time limit, other techniques for uh, other results of this paper are deferred to our paper. Mm. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thanks for the talk. Uh, so any questions? Uh, I have a question that, uh, um, so yes. what kind of uh, uh, functionality you can support for your adaptives, adaptively secure scheme? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, and generally, um, uh, that's, uh, all adaptive security matching uh, the existing non-leakage non resilient um, uh, ABE, such as uh, uh, CNF, uh, and uh, mm, and uh, uh, identity based uh, encryption. Ah, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, so, yes. So if you can do, uh, um, you can realize the functionality for the uh, non leakage resident, so you can also yes. do the. Yes, yes, yes. Just, uh, just match this. Okay, I see. I see. So, so another question is: um, Do you consider the leakage of master secret key? Uh, no, I think this is our future work. Okay. Okay. So, 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 a general question is: um, uh, Whether it is, uh, I mean, I mean, um, is there a, a formal treatment uh, showing that the leakage? I think if you can uh, build a, a leakage resilient for the master secret key, so it is also it it it, it actually implied. Uh, uh, the liquid resilience for the user secret keys? Mm, generally, I think uh, uh, this should be uh, two different uh, questions. Mm, uh, in this paper, we use uh, the general general framework of a uh, hash proof system, but generally this framework um, will derive uh, a leakage for user key, not for master secret key. Okay, I see. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Thank you, thank you. So any any questions? Uh, let me check the chatting room. Okay. <clears throat> so let's move to the to the next talk, which is uh, which is encapsulated search index, public key, sublinear, distributed, and delegatable by Eric Aronisti, David Cash, uh Yevigini Dodis. Uh, Daniel Gallus, Christopher uh, Higley, uh, Harish Kasikayan, uh, Owen Tisson. So, uh, Harish, you will give the talk. Um, thanks for the introduction. <clears throat> um, this is our joint work with uh, folks at Atacama, David Cash at the University of Chicago, and Yevgeny Jardis at NYU. And we'll be talking about encapsulated search index. Um, so let's get started right off the bat. Searchable encryption is something that has gotten really popular. And the simple reason is that remote storage is ubiquitous. My own presentation is probably stored on uh, at least on two different cloud platforms. But then we never trust uh, the server because we are cryptographers, we are pessimists. We don't like to place trust easily. We have trust issues. Uh, but anyway, uh, so what we'd like to do is we try to throw encryption at it. 
but we are very good at what we do. So our encryption is maybe a little too perfect. And the downside is that it actually hides all information about the data. So if I want to search, I would have to locally download it and do these operations. And um, so a better solution is to factor in the fact that the server is completely untrusted and, in, and then still do these operations. So we use these additional encrypted structures, uh, which we call as index. So there's some kind of secret key involved to make sure that uh, I can uh, mention, or I can still work in the, par in the paradigm that the server is untrusted. So more specifically, what is our motivation? So most documents do not change, which means that they are immutable. Uh, so photos, patterns, and other documents. So once you create it, it exists. Um, so what it gives us is that I can generate index non-incrementally. So I don't need to wait. Uh, I have all of the document at the get-go so I can uh, index it and move on with my life. And what it also gives me is that I don't need document-specific to tokens or what we call as universal indexing. Um, so uh, so either we can have a document-specific tokens in meaning I can generate a token for this particular keyword for uh, this particular document. So I don't need to universally text uh, generate a token. And we also want this feature of some delegation, which is basically where I can uh, have multiple search approvers. So what it means is I can allow an encrypted index E that is built for a particular document D using public key secret key pair to be searched by another user with public key secret key pair PK prime SK prime. And I need to do this without knowing these and without modifying E. So I the index is uh, e has been built, and I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to spend effort to recompute the index because the document D is no longer at my disposal. So this is the uh, setting of delegation. And based on all of this, we want to uh, ask the question, can we achieve sublinear search time? Because uh, most standard day search structures like Bloom filter, balance search trees, we can do better uh, than O of N. And we also want public key indexing because it gives us a powerful tool for multiple index creator. An index creator by definition, or as the name suggests, is someone who creates the index. So this is what we work with. And especially because one, uh, the existing solution of symmetric searchable encryption uh, gives us the powerful uh, tool of sublinear searching, but we lose out on public key indexing. Whereas specs gives us public key indexing and does not give us sublinear search. So we want to somehow marry the two together and have the best of both worlds. And that is what we do when we introduce a uh, primitive of encapsulated search index. So this is how the index creation process works. I have a phone, which is secure. And I have a desktop that's powerful but insecure. So when I'm using it right now, it's secure. And after that, I don't trust anyone. Um, I don't trust it. Um, so the, public, uh, the phone generates a public key secret key, keeps secret key for itself, sends public key to the desktop. Now the desktop can use this public key to create an index uh, E using this document D. Uh, and specifically what it also gives us is this additional uh, compact handle called C, okay? We will explain why all of these matters in just a couple of minutes, but this is the index creation process. And once it is done, it erases the document D. So because it's no longer trusted, I don't want the desktop to continue to have the document in its possession. So all the, the um, that the desktop has is this index E and this handle C. Now, uh, if I want to search, get a search approval for W, I need some token uh, which I can search in the index E. So at this point, uh, the desktop will send the ciphertext C or the handle C and uh, this, the word W, the keyword W. And what we want at this point is the, uh, the property of privacy preserving. What it means is that if I see C and W, the phone does not learn any other information and it should hold information theoretically. And we actually achieve this by simple virtue of our syntax where we have this modularity, which gives us unconditional privacy preserving. And so now the privacy preserving has been met. Uh, the phone gets C and W and the search approver does this where it takes the secret key and C and W to produce a specific token ZW for the keyword W, great. Now it simply sends ZW to the desktop. Now we want consistency check that ZW is, is properly formed. The most that the phone can do is denial of service. It can't make the desktop output incorrect answers. And we also want token privacy is, which is basically to say that uh, seeing C ZW, I have no information about any other W prime in the document D. 
or the same keyword in any other document, D prime not equal to D. Recall that we don't have the property of universal indexing. So ZW that we see is essentially unique to this document D for which ENC is the index and the handle. And what it also gives us is the same public key secret key can be reused multiple times because E comma C is unique to a document D. And we want this communication to be constant. So note that it only sends C and W and not the index E because E could as, be as large as the number of keywords. So this is uh, the as entire setting for ESI. Uh, and uh, this, finally, we use the, uh, the E to search with ZW and then uh, we produce the matches. So how do we actually build our construction? What is the intuition? So we index, we will index it uh, W, which is the keyword by computing a pseudorandom function on W. So we will store this value in a sublinear search dictionary. Great, but know that we wanted a public key setting. So we need two different ways to compute PRF. One using uh, the public key for index creator and one using the secret key for the search approver. But recall, we wanted consistency check. So we have to throw in a VRF into the mix. Now we have this naive construction where an index creator can simply sample a VRF key and, it, and I will index, index with this VRF and then I'll simply encrypt this uh, uh, VRF key with uh, uh, the public key and send it to the search approver. And it works, but unfortunately this does not help um, offer support for delegation and distribution, which is two features that we want. And uh, we discussed the reasons why in the paper and in the full talk. And so we introduced this new primitive called encapsulated verifiable random function with support for both delegation and distribution. Okay, so what is this VVRF? I have Alice, I have Bob. Alice generates public key secret key, sends it to Bob. Bob runs this NCAP, runs this NCAP procedure to produce a trapdoor T and a ciphertext C. So this is what Bob has, just the trapdoor and it sends the, um, the ciphertext to Alice. Alice runs the eval procedure, which produce EVRF of X using the secret key, which is Y. Simultaneously, Bob can also do this comp procedure, which takes this trapdoor to generate X. Um, I'm going a bit fast, but the security game is just an indistinguishability game. The key thing is that I, the adversary has access to this Oracle eval. So and then it's a in classic indistinguishability game. Okay, I'm, I'm going to skip the construction uh, because of lack of time, but just to show that there is a, such a construction which does this value computation. So what do we do? How do we use this EVRF? We have a generic construction where we say, the key gen algorithm will just run the gen algorithm for EVRF, produces a public key secret key. And then index procedure will be, uh, will compute this NCAP procedure, will use the trapdoor T to compute the EVRF value. And then I will just build, insert essentially every value in Y into a sublinear search structure. And this is ENC. The search procedure will use the eval algorithm instead of the EVRF function and searches in this, uh, in the sublinear search dictionary. And we achieve threshold by taking our standard EVRF and throwing verifiable summary secret sharing. We get a tier of end security. And we also have delegatable EVRF where uh, we can take um, a delegate function which takes a cipher text C1 and a secret key SK1 and another secret key SK2 to produce a cipher text C2 such that the eval values on SK1, C1 is exactly the same as SK2 and C2. That's the correctness of delegation. Now, the security definition itself has several subtleties. We refer you to the paper. Uh, the only thing that I would mention at this point is that uh, the, the big picture of why our standard EBRF is secure, we essentially, how we go achieve delegatable security is we replace this R prime and we separate this R prime and this R prime by throwing in another. Um, term D. So that's how we get away with it. And uh, I will wrap it up in just this slide. What do we achieve in this paper? We introduce this primitive that's brand new called encapsulated search index, which has public key and sublinear, where we critically rely on the fact that the document is available at the get-go. And then we introduce also this primitive called encapsulated verifiable random function. And a lot of these are uh, I mean, we say proved it secure in, uh, under different security uh, uh, security levels. And it's also commercially deployed by Atacama. Uh, and it's uh, it's deployed and there are clients who are extensively using this in their day-to-day -day application. Uh, thank you so much. I will take questions. Uh, otherwise, you can also refer to the paper. 
uh, the full version is available on Egypt. Thank you. Hey, thanks for the talk. So any questions? I have a short question. So, so here sublinear uh, is in which parameter? It's sublinear in the size of database or something else? It's the uh, so sublinear in the number of keywords in the uh, in the document. So E is uh, basically every single value is inserted there. Okay, 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 thanks. Okay, thank you. So any questions? If there's no questions, we will well move to, to the next the talk. Okay, so the next talk is uh, KDM security for the Fujisaki Okamoto transformation uh, in the QROM by Fuyuki Kitakawa and uh, Leo Nishimaki. Uh, Fuyuki will give the talk, right? Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, yes. Oh, so thank you for introduction. Uh, I'm Fuyuki from NTT. Uh, this is a joint work with Leo Nishimaki from NTT. Uh, so this talk is about KDM security. So I will start with uh, what is KDM security. So key dependent message security or KDM security for short uh, guarantees that an encryption scheme can securely encrypt its secret key. So uh, the situation of uh, encrypting uh, secret keys naturally occur in many cryptographic protocols. Uh, recently, uh, KDM security has found an application uh, also in quantum cryptography. So in this work, uh, we tackle the following question. Uh, does uh, do existing practical in the CPA or CCA secure PK scheme uh, satisfy KDM security in the QROM? Uh, especially as practical schemes, uh, we focus on Fujisaki Okamoto transformations F4, and we ask whether uh, F4 transformations satisfy KDM security in the QROM without square root loss. So uh, I will briefly review F4 transformations and the square root loss problem in the QROM. So as shown by Hwant et al, uh, F4 transformations can be decomposed into two transformations, T and U. So the T transformation converts an in CPA secure PK scheme into a one-way CPA secure deterministic PK scheme. And the U transformation converts a one-way CPA secure deterministic PK scheme into an in CCA secure CAM. And there are three variants of U. And now I will talk about the square root loss problem in the QROM. So in the QROM, uh, many security proofs suffer from the square root loss. So this is partially because uh, we have to use one-way to hiding lemma uh, proposed by UNRU uh, in order to justify random oracle programming. So roughly speaking, uh, one way to hiding lemma states that uh, there exists an extractor D uh, such that the advantage gap caused by random oracle programming can be bounded by square root of the probability that the extractor D extract the programmed point. So the square root loss uh, significantly degrades the efficiency of cryptographic schemes. Uh, so we have to avoid it, uh, especially when we study practical schemes. Uh, improved variant of one way to hiding lemma was recently proposed. Uh, it is called double-sided one way to hiding lemma. And by using the double-sided one way to hiding lemma, uh, Kukta et al. showed that the in the CCA security of effort transformation can be proved without a square root loss. Uh, however, the applicability of uh, the double-sided one-way to hiding lemma is somewhat limited. Uh, especially, uh, it is not clear how to use the double-sided one-way to hiding lemma in the context of KDM security due to the circularity issue. So this is our results. Uh, we obtained the following two results. Uh, first, we show that a PK scheme obtained by any variant of F4 CAM with uh, one time path as them satisfies KDM CPA security in the QROM without a square root loss. And the second, uh, we show that a PK scheme obtained by a single variant of F4 CAM with one time path them MAC as them satisfies KDM CCA security in the QROM without a square root loss. 
Uh, more concretely, uh, for the first result, uh, we can use variants of u uh, called u bot and u not bot. And for the second result, uh, we can use a variant of u uh, called u bot key confirmation. And for this second result, uh, we require a mild injectivity assumption uh, for the underlining in the CPA secure PK scheme. Uh, this assumption is the same as that required in the previous works uh, showed the in the CCA security of effort transformations without square root loss. Uh, so finally, uh, I will briefly talk about the technical challenge in this work. So since we study KDM security, uh, of course we have to solve the circularity issue. Uh, usually in the classical ROM, uh, we can easily solve the circularity issue by just random Oracle programming. Uh, however, uh, we found that uh, the solving the circularity issue by random oracle programming is not easy in the QROM uh, if we want to avoid a square root loss. So concretely, uh, to prove effort security in the QROM without square root loss, uh, we currently need to use a double-sided one-way to hiding lemma. Uh, this means that uh, in the security proof, if we program the random oracle, uh, we have to deal with a double-sided extractor who can get access to both pre-programmed and post-programmed random oracles. So in this case, uh, we can see that uh, even if the security issue is solved from the view of an adversary by random oracle programming, the security issue will appear to the view of the double-sided extractor since the double-sided extractor can get access to pre-programmed random oracle. So due to this problem, uh, in fact, it seems difficult to solve the circularity issue only by random oracle programming in the QROM if we want to avoid a square root loss. So we need a new technique to handle the circularity issue in the QROM in order to achieve our goal. So our main technical contribution is to propose uh, such a new technique. So if you're interested in our work or our solution to this problem, uh, please see our paper. Yeah, so thank you for your attention. Okay, thanks for the talk. So any questions? So I, ha I have a question that you mentioned the square root security loss in the, in the talk several times. So uh, I think it's quite important because the, uh, the, the efficiency uh, will decrease if you have uh, such a huge security loss. Mm -hmm. so, so technically, if we don't care about uh, such a security loss, so do we have a sim simple way to, to, achieve, uh, to achieve KDM security? Yes, the answer is yes. So, okay. in, so in the classical ROM, uh, when we program random oracle, uh, we use a tool called difference lemma, uh, right? So, and yeah, so, if we uh, don't care square root loss, uh, we can use one way to hiding lemma as a complete alternative of the difference lemma. Yeah, so in this sense, uh, so if we don't care square root loss, we can easily approve KDM security in the QROM. So okay. difficulty is there only when we uh, care square root loss. Okay, thanks. So any question for this talk? Okay, so no questions. So we move to the, the last talk in this session, uh, which is uh, the direction of update for encryption does matter by Leon Ishimaki. And Ishimaki will give the, will give the talk. <clears throat> oh, there, there, is a, there is a question for, for Fuyuki. Oh, oh wait. Um, so how does the decryption failure affect the security loss? I guess this is for you. Okay, decryption failure. Uh, this is for another talk. Yeah. Decryption failure. Yeah, but yeah, in our work, we are basically consider uh, the, uh, the correctness called 
uh, almost all keys correctness. So in this case, I think a decry decryption failure is not an um, issue. So okay. 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 So if we have a uh, more question, we can uh, we can ask uh, after the last talk maybe. So so let's move to the to the last talk by by Leo. <clears throat> Thank you for introduction. Introduction. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, updatable encryption. Uh, to explain updatable encryption, let's consider the following scenario: Alice saves her encrypted data on cloud server. Her, co her computer is attacked, and her secret key is leaked. To protect her data, she generates a new secret key. She should not uh, uh, reveal her uh, reveal the secret key to the cloud server. So she downloads all encrypted data from the server, decrypts them, encrypts them by the new secret key again, and uploads them to the server. This incurs a significant efficiency loss. To resolve this issue, we use updatable encryption. In updatable encryption, we can periodically update the secret key and the ciphertext. An updatable encryption scheme has key generation, encryption, and decryption algorithms as a standard encryption scheme, and has two additional algorithms. One is a token generation algorithm. We can generate an update token from two secret keys. In this talk, we focus on ciphertext independent updates where we do not need a ciphertext for generating a token. The other one is an update algorithm. We can convert a ciphertext under an older key into one under a new key by using an update token. If Alice uses updatable encryption in th this scenario, uh, she generates a new key and an update token, then, she passed the token to the server. And the server can update uh, uh, her uh, encrypted data. Okay, so uh, here, one issue is whether our token uh, leaks information about secret keys or not, since the token is generated from two secret keys. In previous works, there are three categories for key updates. The first one is the bidirectional key update. We can infer a secret key from both directions via token. That is, we can infer a new key from a token and an old key, and vice versa. The second one is the unidirectional key update. We can infer a new key from a token and an old key. However, we cannot infer an old key from a token and a new key. The last one is the no directional key update. We cannot infer keys from a token. All previous updatable encryption scheme have a bidirectional key update. This is not desirable since such token leaks more information. Unidirectional key updates are seemingly stronger than bidirectional key updates. However, Jam proves that the security in the bidirectional key update setting is equivalent to the security in the unidirectional key update setting. This is surprising since the direction of updatable encryption does not matter much. However, here is a question. Why do we consider the unidirectional key update where our key inference is a forward direction? We can consider another unidirectional key update variant where our key inference is the backward direction. That is, we can infer an old key from a token and a new key, but cannot in the opposite direction. We call this backward leak unidirectional key updates. To distinguish two types of unidirectional key updates, we call the previous unidirectional key updates forward leak unidirectional key updates. Let's see the backward leak unidirectional key updates are preferable to the forward leak one. Here, we consider the unidirectional ciphertext update. 
this is reasonable in the backward leak injection key update settings, but I omit the reason in this short talk. Suppose that the middle secret key is rigged. Then in the forward leak setting, we can get the newest secret key BR token. In this case, even if we securely delete all the ciphertext, we cannot protect the newest ciphertext. Here, updating ciphertext does not help us since the newest key is inferred BR token. In the backward leak setting, we can get the, the oldest, oldest secret key BR token. In this case, if we securely deleted all, all the ciphertext, we can protect the newest key and the ciphertext. Note that I assume that the ciphertext update is unidirectional. Uh, so, uh, so in this work, we introduced the definition of backward leak unidirectional key updates as I explained so far. Surprisingly or unsurprisingly, we also show that backward leak unidirectional key updates are strictly stronger than the forward leak unidirectional key updates. This is sharp contrast to Jan's equivalence theorem. More concretely, we showed that existing secure UE schemes in the forward leak unidirectional key update setting are not secure in the backward leak unidirectional key setting, key update setting. We present uh, two updatable encryption schemes. One is secure in the backward leak unidirectional key update setting under the learning with errors assumption. The other one is secure in the no directional setting and based on indistinguishability obfuscation and one way functions. Uh, this is our result. So, uh, my uh, take home message is the direction of update the brain does matter. That's it. Thank you for attention. Okay, thanks for the talk. So, any questions? Mm, so, so I have a question, uh, maybe a bit general. So uh, I don't work on the update for encryption, but uh, uh, from your introduction. So I feel that uh, the notion is quite similar to the notion of uh, re-encryption. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is the difference between these two notions? Okay, so yeah, uh, it is very uh, similar to proxy re-encryption. However, uh, so in the proxy re-encryption, there are multiple users, right? Uh, mm -hmm. For example, uh, uh, re-encryption key from uh, Aris to Bob, something like that. But uh, in updatable encryption, there is only one user. One user update uh, his or her uh, secret key, update periodically. Yeah, right. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's a, a big difference. So and uh, basically, in updatable encryption, there is no public key. Just the secret key, oh, okay. uh, because uh, uh, the only one user use uh, the secret key uh, for her, uh, for her, his uh, or his uh, encrypted data. Okay, I see. I see. Okay, thanks. So, any questions? Okay, so I think I should conclude this session. So, and uh, thanks for all the talks and all the speakers, and uh, thanks all the audience. So I think offline discussion is possible. So uh, we have uh, we have a twenty minutes break, and uh, uh, Stephen will will chair the next session for.